Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat. In today's video, we're going to cover how to do three axis machining using the Prototrack RMX. We do get a lot of people out in the field that tend to think that for some reason our machines can't cut 3D, which is crazy, but I think uh, part of that might just come from our competition, hoping that we can't. Nonetheless, if I was doing a lot of real 3D work, I'd probably still use my CAD CAM system to create my toolpath. But for simple things, I can do it by hand, and I'm about to show you that. As you can see on the screen here, it's showing a simulation of how I'm going to cut the part that's in the vise right now, which starts out as just a milling event with an arc and another milling event, and then I use a step over and a rotation, which moves it all the way around. So from the first part that I already programmed where I kept these lines straight, used a repeat to move across the part, I'm going to now show you how I did this part to make it a rotated part and end up with a ball, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is exit out of here, and then I'm going to move back to my program. And in my program, I'm just gonna walk through what I did, okay? So you can kind of see on the screen what the actual shape is. And here's the same milling events I used in part one, right? So I got a milling event that's connected to an arc and it's moving in the Z axis only, as you can tell. And then it's coming back down and running across the end of the part with another milling event. After that, what I actually did is I took a, uh, a copy repeat and I moved down so that I could cut that trough through the middle of the part. Okay, so I went across, then I came back, and then there's my repeat. As you see, it all fills in here. And what it's saying is, okay, I'm going to move back and forth and move down in the z-axis until I get just above the part, which is the dome. After that, I take those same milling events and move across the part, and then I use the copy rotate, moving it back with just one degree of rotation to go across. And the reason I did that is so that I can move across and come back and forth like so, okay? I didn't want it to come across, lift up, come over, come across, lift up, come over, okay? So I have two sets. After that, I use a simple sub-rotate, which says to take all of my events and just rotate them entirely around the part, okay? I'm rotating at one degree each time and 179 rotations, okay? So once I've done that, then the next thing I would do is just set up my tool, which is already done, if I look in here, you can see I have a ball nose end mill in here, that's one inch. And then to show you how it's actually gonna run the part, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna skip the part where it actually machines down because I've already machined it for you to make it easier for the video crew. And also so you can see what's happening without all the chips flying, okay? So I'm gonna go right to the run mode here. And in the run mode, I'm going to start at event number eight. Event number eight is my first pass across the top of the ball at the regular dimensions, and then after that, I'm going to rotate it around, okay? So it tells me here that when I'm ready, push go. So I'm gonna push go, it's gonna go home. And then as usual, I always like to use tracking to make sure I'm in the right place, okay? So I'm gonna to go to tracking, I'm gonna turn the spindle on, and as I track through here, you're gonna see how it moves over the top of the ball. So now that you have an idea how it works, I'm simply going to hit stop, CNC run, and go. Now for the sake of a visual, if you watch it for a little bit, you're going to see how it starts actually changing and all three axes are running. And of course, I don't have to let it run the whole thing, the video would be too long, but this will give you a really good idea on how to take some simple events and rotate them all the way around. And again, like I said before, uh, when I'm connecting pieces together, I just got to make sure that I understand which plane I'm working in. In this case, I started out in the XZ plane, and then as I rotated it, it became X, Y, and Z, okay? Now I'm going to stop it here. Just so you can hear me a little bit better, okay? So what I actually did is I took a milling event that moved across into an arc back into a milling event and then I repeated it several times to get down to the bottom to cut a trough out so I had room for my end mill. Next thing I did is I took those same events and I just rotated them one degree each time that it spins and went all the way around, halfway around the part actually gets you the whole part, right? So what you see there is a completed product and I hope this really helps. I know that people have been asking this for a while uh, whether they didn't know we could program in three axis or if they simply just didn't know how. Hopefully between the first video and this one, now you have a much clearer understanding on how to do it and you can go out and make some pretty cool parts. I appreciate you looking and watching as usual. And if you have any questions, please comment to me on the YouTube channel and I'll get back to you any way that I can. 
As always, I'm tracking Pat and keep on tracking.